Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's tutorial is going to be focused on a channel banner. Now this design is really simple to make and this first little intro here, I'm going to go over a couple of steps you can take to take this to the next level. I'm going to have a timestamp right on the video that you can jump to, to where the tutorial actually starts. So as you can see, this design, simple gradient in the back, just a simple rounded rectangle, a character, text, and this giant white space. Now, if you want to take this a step further, you can apply a pattern onto this back area. As you can see, it affects the character model, so you'd have to cut out the character model if you don't want the pattern affecting them, or just rasterize the pattern overlay right onto the back. So you can just do that by right-clicking and rasterize layer style. Though you want to make sure you hide the stroke when you do that, Otherwise, once you rasterize it, the character model will also be clipping onto the stroke. So it won't look as if they're within this stroke area. Now, as for the stroke, I normally use white because the majority of Discord users prefer dark mode. And with white, it's going to show up better in that dark setting. Now, of course, you can choose a different color, whether that be a gradient. So just like this here, you can have a gradient on your border to do that. You would simply do Control J here. So what we can do from here is right click, rasterize their style. We can hide the stroke on that first one. And this one still has the stroke. What we can do is blending options, gradient overlay. Let's give this maybe, this is a really poor gradient that doesn't match that well, but just a rough example. Now rasterize their style. And from here, we can go back into blending options and tinker around with this to make it how we want to. And that's one option for customization, changing the border. Another one would be going into this text area and the space layer will clip on a background for it. And with a backgrounds, I recommend once you drop it down to go to filter, blur gallery, field blur, and put it at about here. Then I would maybe drop in a glass overlay that gives it a glassy look. And this text itself, we can also drop in that on top of it. That's the corners, not the text. So we can drop it there and we can apply an effect to this as well, just to get it to blend a tad better. Though with that, I'd probably use a different font, but it's completely fine as well as is. So that's just some examples of what you can do to further customize this design. What I'm giving you to start with is a really basic design that still looks great, but offers you a lot in terms of customization. And it's a great way for you to practice your Photoshop and banner design skills. So without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial itself. We're gonna start off by going to File, New, We'll be using 1200 by 530, then click Create. As usual, we're going to create a new layer by clicking that plus in the corner. Delete the backgrounds. We'll come over to our rounded rectangle tool. Don't worry about the color just yet. Drag this across like so. Whoops, delete that extra one. Drag this to the center. Now, you can either make adjustments to it up here, or preferably, you do so using the Properties tab here on the right. If you don't see Properties, go to Window, come down to Properties, check that, it'll appear right here, and you can dock it to the side if you want, or leave it where it originally appeared. So we're gonna change the width of this to 1140, and the height to 290. As for the edges, we'll put it at about 62 pixels. Now we can drag this to the center, and that is perfect. Next thing we're gonna do is do Control J on our keyboard to create a duplicate, and then we're gonna hide that. Then we're gonna to return to this initial shape. We'll call this the base, do Control G, call this the base area. Right click on the eyeball, let's make this red just to keep ourselves organized. Now right click on that base layer, go to blending options, come over to a gradient overlay. It's actually a really pretty gradient now that I look at it. Anyway, 
we're going to be using the following colors for our gradients. The first one is going to be this blue at 7DC6ED, and the pink is F5A0BE. Now we can close out of that. Now I do want the blue to be at the top, and that's a simple enough fix. I can just click reverse, and now the blue is on top and the pink is at the bottom. So click OK, then right click, rush as layer style, then right click once again, blending options, stroke, seven pixels, white, and that is perfect for me. Now we're gonna come to this shape right here. We're gonna switch this to white, and if you've probably already guessed, or as you've probably already guessed, this will be that white shape that we were seeing previously. So for the width, let's put this at 820, and the height at around 250. As for the corners, those will remain the same. And this, we can just drag off to the right side and it has aligned itself. Now we're going to grab our character model, should be right here, drag her in, make sure she's in the base area, then we can either hold alt and click in between to clip her on, or we can right click and create clipping mask. And if you ever make a mistake, you can always do control Z to undo just so you don't have to come over here and undo and redo from, from these buttons there, you can just use the shortcuts. It's much quicker and more efficient. So let's call this the model. We'll do Control T and we will drag her down until she covers most of the space here on the left. I am pleased with that. So we're gonna right click, go into blending options, Go to drop shadow, and that's actually a perfect setting. It differentiates her from the backgrounds. And again, as you might have already guessed, these two colors from the backgrounds, I grabbed that right from my character model. When choosing your background colors, I do highly recommend that you select colors that match your character model. You don't want them to be clashing because it's not gonna have the same effect as if the colors complement one another. So again, these are the settings you want for the drop shadow. Click OK, and we are done there for now. So we can return to this white space. Let's do Control G to group that. Right click on the eyeball. Let's make that blue and call this the text area. Now we're gonna come to this. Let's call this the base. Right click, blending options, stroke, for the color, we'll be using the following, and again, it's just a sample from her hair, D-A-F-B-F-F. -F -F. Click OK, and let's set this at around two pixels, but three might actually look a tad better as it's more visible. Now we're gonna come over to Inner Shadow. We want this at 77, zero, zero, and 13. Then click OK on that. Now we can go ahead and drag in our corners as well as our low poly overlay that we'll be using for those corners. So for now, we're gonna hide this overlay. We'll call that like so, just so we can keep ourselves organized. I'm using that word a lot. So Control T on this to go into free transform and then hold shift as you rotate it so it rotates at 15 degree angles because we want to bring it back to being a 90 degree right at the center. Now control T once again. Let's scale this down to about there and put that in the corner. So that's the first corner. Make sure it's lined up properly. Then do control J, control T, go to the width at the top, add a minus to the front of it to flip it. We'll drag this to the other side. Now merge that down, control J, control T, move this all the way around, and we will drag this down as well. Now we're gonna also right click and select merge down. We'll call this the arrows, right click, blending options, 
color overlay and we'll be using the following color F7 BF D3. Click OK, then one more time, right click, rasterize layer style, right click, blending options, pattern overlay, and we'll be using those lines. The setting is actually fine for now. We'll come over to this overlay, make that visible, clip it on. Don't forget to do Control T to scale it down just a tad. As for the settings, we will put this at soft light. And finally, to end this tutorial off, we're going to be using the font New Comic BD at 189 pixels. Let's drop that down. We'll use rules as I normally do. Make sure that is centered. Then right click, blending options, stroke. We'll be using the following color for the stroke, 615240 at three pixels. Next, a pattern overlay. That looks fine. And finally, a drop shadow. And that setting that we have now looks fine as well. And I don't think I mentioned what that blue color was. It's 82C4EB. And that really marks the end for the tutorial. Now I'm going to show you how to save this real quick. So go to edit, copy merge, after you highlight the entire thing with the rectangular marquee tool. Then file, new, create, control V, delete the background. As you can see, it is transparent now. You can do file, export, save for web. And these are the settings that I use. Or file, save as exporting for web just makes the file smaller and easier to upload. Now, if you want to take this a step further, I recommend you go back to the beginning of the video before the timestamp as I go over a few steps of how to make this design even better. And as always, feel free to experiment with this. For example, I have a tutorial that will be popping up on screen shortly. That tutorial is a great reference in regards to ways you can improve upon this design and really make it unique for your community. Because at the end of the day, we all just want a design that fits our community and really can't be found elsewhere. So if everybody is using the same exact design for their communities, you won't stand out as much. So once again, I highly encourage you take some time to really make changes to this design and improve on it in ways that will really suit your community. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have an awesome day.